So I'm trying to film a video about coffee. I have been trying to film this video all day and this isn't going to be a negative video. This is going to be a positive video because actually I've had a really good fun day. Lots of learning, lots of, yeah, yeah, it's been good. But I just want to share with you the challenges of filming a project when you don't have a studio. So this is the current situation in my kitchen. It, yeah, it's a bit intense. I don't have a dedicated studio space and I don't mind that. I normally just film up in my room, but I'm making a video about coffee for a company I work for called The Well Better, which is gonna be a, a really amazing well-being space. So go and check them out, officially launching 1st of September and making a video about coffee because I'm A, the resident videographer, but B, I'm also the resident coffee guy. And I've got everything that I need here in the kitchen. I've had to rearrange my kitchen to be able to film here and got everything set up. And then the builders next door decided that's when they really, really wanted to start banging. And so that was a bit frustrating. got everything sorted out, got everything organized, and then couldn't film because of banging, hammering. Yeah, it was interesting. So I decided to scrap that. I'd film the B-roll. So I had to dismantle the studio. Well, not completely. Rearranged the studio to be able to get the lighting better for filming the B-roll. Made so much coffee. Didn't drink it all. I was tempted, but I didn't drink it all. Once I'd drunk all the coffee or made all the coffee, then had to reset it all to be able to get things sorted out. And thankfully it's now quiet, but it's also about 45 minutes away from my daughter's bedtime. So now need to make sure that I can actually get everything sorted out so I can then give her a bath and bedtime and then reset again, ready for finishing all the filming. So I've got four videos that I need to do which is basically how to make good coffee at home. And, and it's, yeah, it's a, a topic close to my heart. But yeah, it's been fun. It's, this is part of the difficulty with YouTubing. If you have a studio, if you're a big YouTuber and you can afford to have your own studio or your own space, or you've got an extra room in the house that you can dedicate to getting all of this stuff set up, fantastic. But it took me probably 45 minutes to get this all set up. It will take me 45 minutes to tidy it all the way at the end. If I had a studio, great, just leave it all up. But I don't. And so it's it becomes an interesting pressure. When we watch YouTube, so many of the big YouTubers are earning so much money from what they're doing. Even if they're not earning huge amounts of money, they're earning enough that they can dedicate space to this. And at the moment, I just don't have that facility. And, and I reckon 99% of YouTubers don't have that facility. And that's not a problem because actually it's not about creating the absolute perfect environment for, for filming. It's about telling a story and telling, telling people what you believe they want to hear. And having a beautiful studio for that, it's, it's not vital, not vital at all. It's also interesting filming next to the fridge because that's definitely going to be picked up on camera. There is part of me that's tempted to turn the fridge off just while I film this. I think I'll do that. Right, I fixed the fridge now. So that's all sorted. So 
I'm now gonna do my filming for my coffee. So I've got cafetiere, French press, V60, iced V60, and then an iced latte. So I'm gonna get that filmed, get that sorted, and I'll see you back at the end. Hi, I'm Ben from Well Better. I'm here to teach you how to make barista-worthy coffee at home so you can have a better day. Like my grandmother says, if coffee's worth doing, it's worth doing well. Today we're gonna to talk about cafetiers or French presses. Now, you're using yours wrong, but you can make better coffee with it. So I'm gonna show you how to improve your coffee with a French press. The better the coffee, the better the drink. If you don't have a grinder, you can buy ground coffee, but always try and buy decent ground coffee. Water, please use filtered water or bottled water. Tap water as it is will not make the best coffee. Get yourself a set of digital scales. The chances are you've been doing it the same way that I got taught by my dad, which is you boil a kettle, just off the boil, you put two scoops per person into the cafetiere, you then chuck in your boiling water, you wait an abstract amount of time, basically until you get bored, and then you put the top on, plunge it, what you get is a really sludgy cup of coffee. So you know that thing where you get to the bottom of the cup and it's just got all of that grit and silt at the bottom. We are going to do 60 grams per litre of water. So for a 500 ml cafetiere, which is enough for kind of two cups, you want 30 grams. So consistency is the key to getting repeatably good coffee each and every time you have it. So that's definitely gonna help you. So we've got 30 grams of coffee in there. We're gonna get our water and we're gonna add 500 ml of water. With this technique, it doesn't really matter how quickly or slowly you actually add it. And now you just wait. Three minutes, just let it sit. Don't touch it, don't do anything with it. Amuse yourself while you wait. Yeah, we're just gonna keep waiting for a little while. Normally you wouldn't be filming a video while you're doing this, so you can do anything else, so I just, Got some time for the camera. Three minutes, done. Get a spoon, and give it a good stir. There's a crust on top that forms of all that coffee that's brewed beautifully. And you want to just break that crust and start letting it sink to the bottom. Then take your spoon and just clear off some of the floaty sort of foamy bits that appear on the top. And then we wait another five minutes. When my father taught me how to do this, he just said, at this point, you just push it all the way down. Don't. All you wanna do is go down so it just sits on top of the water. Problem is that if you push this all the way down, all you're gonna do is stir up all that sediment that we have let settle. You want a nice clean cup of coffee. So there you go. Then simply pour and enjoy. So there you have it a barista-worthy coffee at home. Let us know how you get on. Please tell us, send us your snaps so we can see how you're doing. And if you've got any hints or tips that would be useful for everyone else, let us know. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye. It's good coffee. It's still too hot, but yeah, it's good coffee. Right, what am I doing next? Iced coffee next. Yep, still too hot. I think a lot of people drink coffee way too hot. Like you should let it cool down so that you can actually drink it without scalding yourself. My mum insists on always having it really, really, really hot. And I don't understand how you can possibly enjoy it when it's that hot, but that's just me. I'm sure she can't understand how I can enjoy it when it's cool. I'm actually quite used to drinking cold coffee. I quite like it. Which is lucky as the next video is on literally cold coffee. Let's get to that one. Pour your coffee and enjoy it. Everyone knows that coffee poured from higher up tastes better. So there you have it. Stop clapping in the middle of saying words. If you can give me 10 minutes, my love, I'll be done. It's nearly bath time. And I'm in between my wife and the bathroom for our daughter's bath. Do you know, actually that's much better than I thought it was gonna be. I was really, I was, stuff falling down and now somebody's using a hairdryer outside. Yeah, that's much better than I thought that was gonna be. I thought that was gonna be um, pretty horrible because of the instant, but actually, I think I've had enough coffee for today actually. 
So there you go, that's all my filming done. It's, yeah, it's been quite a long day of filming. Seven o'clock now. Um, we did have to pause in the middle so that Emma could bring Isla through and have a bath. But yeah, sorted. All I need to do now is pack everything away. So I guess my point in this is you don't need to have a studio. You don't need to have a dedicated space. You don't need to have fancy lights. I am a professional videographer and I have been for a few years. This kit has all been accrued because of that. I have not been a professional YouTuber. I'm not a professional YouTuber. And if I didn't have access to this kit, I could still make good videos. Having the kit is an accessory to being able to make and tell interesting stories. So you do not need this kit. You do not need all this fancy stuff. All this does is make the stories you want to tell look a little bit better. But the key is to telling good stories in the first place. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, please like it. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, I, you never quite know what you're going to get from week to week basis, but yeah, I'd love you to subscribe. That would be fantastic. And otherwise, thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.